Hi, I'm Kevin, Communications Specialist for the North Little Rock Public Library System, and this is Discover North Little Rock. Privileged to be with Ed Pennebaker, Arkansas artist. He works in glass. His work is just absolutely brilliant. And so it's going to be great to talk to you today. Ed, I've got a bunch of questions. I hope you're ready to, to answer some of these. First of all, um, for someone who has not seen your work, um, and we're going to get to that. We're going to see that as a part of this program today. Let's go back to where you started because you work in glass primarily, correct? Okay, that's in my world a very unique thing. When I think of glass, I think of somebody in art class making a, a glass or a, a vase or something. You go way beyond that. So you started what, in 1981? Right. Okay, and you started in 81. What got you involved in glass? How did you find that that was your thing? At that time, I was an artist in residence in liberal Kansas, and I had a friend who had a glass studio. And we just went out on weekends and worked with him and got interested in it. And then you migrated to Arkansas in 1985. We're glad you're here. Right. Correct. Okay. And then uh, how did you get going here? And, and do you work anywhere else? Or is this primarily your spot? I have my own studio here and just most of my work right, right in Arkansas. Okay. And again, we're back to the whole glass thing. Uh, just, you know, kind of messing around with it or whatever. I would, I would make something that looked like something very primitive. <laughs> Whereas your work is very detail it's ornate uh how do you how did you build up to that level or how did you know that that was your thing well after i worked with uh chef watson and liberal for a while i got a job in ohio at a historic village and i worked up there blowing glass eight hours a day five days a week and that's where i really developed my skills before i just came to arkansas yeah do you ever dabble into anything else because to me i think art is an expression whether it's a glass or whether it's in uh paint or uh, music, whatever art it is, I think you kind of follow your heart with it. And sometimes you just take it where the journey leads you to. So uh, in addition to glass, where has that taken you? Well, actually, I started out as a printmaker before I started doing glass. Mm -hmm. And then the glass really, uh, I started doing functional items at first. And, and then I got kind of tired of doing that kind of production work and decided to do something more interesting. And, a little bit more free form. That's where I started doing the chandeliers and some of the sculpture pieces. We've got a sculpture of yours at the Lehman Library. It's in our, uh, what would be our studio area. And it's gorgeous. And, and if you could kind of describe what that is. And people, anybody can come see it, but I want you to describe that work. It's kind of a snappy looking mm -hmm. piece. Uh, it was kind of like, kind of the idea was a computer bug kind of thing. Okay, that makes sense. Because originally that area was a computer center. It was called our link center. So computer bug. Okay, it makes sense. It does. What uh, is it that you feel inspires you? Is it somebody that says, hey, Ed, I want you to make this particular piece of art? Or do you just look at like the computer center that was there and say, hey, this is what belongs here? How does that work? Well, I, I get inspired a lot by nature. I, I do a lot of seed collecting and gardening. And so seed pods and things like that are of real interest to me. Do you make things that are kind of based on those? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, artist Ed Penny Baker is here with us on Discovering Rock Little Rock. Ed, uh, going back to where you started, to where you are now, have how have you seen your skill as an artist grow or develop? Uh, I think as an artist, all artists change and develop as mm -hmm. they go. Um, what my work started out as doing real production symmetrical things and then I started doing the sculptural that became a lot more freeform um, and I've also started doing cast glass instead of just blown glass. These sculptures here have cast glass where I ladle glass out of the furnace into a steel mold and then press things into it for textures. Okay uh, when you're talking okay and I've got to know this too because some of these are very ornate and some of these are very detailed and have you ever put together a sculpture you were just like almost done with it and something happened it broke and you're like, oh no. <laughs> I mean, you are working with glass. I mean. Well, I have sometimes broken a piece of the sculpture, maybe not the whole right. sculpture, because a lot of my piece, pieces, a lot of my sculptures have multiple components to them. So I might break one part of it and then have to replace a part of it, but never the whole thing. Do you draw it out? Or do you just have in your head, this is what I want to make, and you just come up with Well, especially for these sculptures out here, I had to draw them out first because there's a lot of components that are made that have to go together and things have to fit and line up. Mm -hmm. So I had to 
to do the drawings for those, but I don't always do that. And I want to get to that too, because those are very important. But at the same time, I want to ask, where can somebody see some of your works? In addition to the layman, but where else can people find that? I've got a couple pieces at the State House Convention Center. Um, I sell through some galleries in Northwest Arkansas at Zarks in, in Eureka Springs and mm -hmm. Hogland Square in Bentonville and at the Arkansas Craft Gallery in Mountain View. Do you get phone calls, people to say, hey, Ed, I want you to make this piece for me, or I've got an idea. Can you put this together? Uh, occasionally, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, what do you think is, okay, what is, two questions, your favorite piece? We'll start with that. Uh, my favorite piece is a piece I made in, uh, probably about 2006 or seven. It's mm -hmm. called Dancing Water, mm -hmm. and it's the first time I was casting bronze. I cast a piece of bronze, and then there was six pieces of glass that went together with that and they're kind of upright and real fluid and the second part of that question is what do you think or how you what do you feel is your most famous work that you've done people would recognize uh, most people recognize me for my chandeliers i do a lot of lighting chandelier pieces where would i find one of those uh, well one in the state house convention center doesn't have a light in it but it's a similar form okay but most of them have a light in them all right, I'll have to make a trip over there very soon. Talking to Ed Pinnebaker, an artist here in Arkansas, and he's uh, put together some sculptures that are amazing that recognize the Trail of Tears. So I want to ask you about that. That's one of the things you were talking about uh, outside the Argenta branch of the North Little Rock Public Library System. Uh, these are unique, uh, and I want you to explain what went behind it. Uh, talk about maybe a little bit of the Trail of Tears, the history that you looked at, and what inspired you to put those together. Okay. Okay. Um... John got in contacted me about making these sculptures and so I read several books on some of the, the different tribes that, that came through this area, the Cherokee and the Chickasha and the Seminoles and uh, the Creek um, and then tried to determine what might represent some of those tribes and what, what things they had in common. Uh, of course, Trail of Tears was an easy one. I, one, of, one of the sculptures has tears in it and then the ripples from the tears falling in water kind of represent all of the things that have happened to these tribes and how they've been affected by, mm -hmm. by this. I think a lot of people, and I don't know that we were taught this way in school, but uh, the idea that the Trail of Tears was one event, and it really was not. It was multiple events, and it happened over numerous years. Um, how did that affect you, and how did it affect you as you worked to create that? Well, I've always had kind of a, an affinity for the indigenous people and, and the tribes and thought that they really got a, a bad deal and uh, we didn't treat them right. Um, so it, so it, it really is kind of a sad thing to me that they moved these people off their land and mm -hmm. moved them somewhere where they had to try to make a living where they hadn't done it before. Did, have you got any feedback on the sculptures that you've made from any Native Americans? Uh, no, I haven't. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I think that will come in time, though. I think it was, and I agree with you, but it really was kind of a thing where they cut the short end of the stick. Um, describe the pieces that you have from the library. You talked about the one that had the tears in it. That was the easiest one to do. Uh, but be a little bit more specific about the ones that are there. What what made you do each piece? Okay, the, one of them has tracks in it. And I read a lot about the Chickasaws when they came from Mississippi. They brought a lot of their possessions with them. They had wagons full of possessions and a lot of animals that they brought with them. Of course, even traveling through Arkansas, they lost a lot of those possessions and animals because of the hardships of traveling. Uh, talked about having to travel at night because of so many mosquitoes and insects mm -hmm. and just the swamps in eastern Arkansas were so hard to get through that they lost a lot of their livestock. Yeah. Disease ran rampant through that. That was one of the things I don't think that is mentioned enough. It was not just the move, but it was also the hardships of the move, too. And when it started, it was a very difficult winter in Arkansas. So you had loss of life because of disease, because of the weather and things that happened there. Uh, because of the Arkansas River was basically untamed back then. So trying to cross that was another story as well. And I think people may not understand that uh, we're, we're talking about Native Americans. And these were established folks. They had established communities. They were farmers. They were, at that time, even landowners. They were doing things, and they just really just got kicked out and had to Move. Right. Yeah, the Chicka, uh, Chickasaws were fairly civilized when yeah. they were trying to get along with the people who were coming in. They still got 
thrown out of their, their arenas. Right. Uh, Ed Pennebaker, artist here on Discover North Little Rock. Anything else that you'd like to add to this memorial that is in front of the Argenta Library? Um, not that I can think of right in. Right. How long did it take you to put the, that all together? How, how much time did you have in this? It was actually almost a two-year process from the time John contacted me and we finally installed it. And you mentioned also how it was made. They were done in a different, unique way. You, you did a mold with these and did pressings on them? Right. Yes. Uh, how did you learn that process? That's kind of a, I just got, that was kind of a self-taught process. Um, when I make a batch of glass, there's always some remnants in the bottom of the furnace that I would ladle out and make these blocks. And then eventually I started just doing that on, on purpose, even with a full batch of glass, ladling the glass into the steel mold and pressing objects into it to make textures and, and imprints. It's very worth seeing. Ed Pennebaker, Arkansas artist, he works in glass and other mediums too. Uh, Ed, your work is absolutely spectacular and, and what you've done here is extremely touching. You can find out more about Discover North Little Rock on our YouTube uh, channel. You can check us out on social media, also at nlrlibrary.org. Ed, uh, let's give some uh, push to your website too, where people can find you. Where would they track you down? You can find me at redfernglass.com. And it's a pleasure today. Thanks so much. This guy's great. Go see his work. Ed Pennebaker, thank you for watching Discover North Little Rock. One, two, three. Perfect. Yeah.